Hi, my name is Taya Kasahara. My pronouns are they, them. I'm a Nikkei Canadian, trans, non-binary, interdisciplinary artist, the creator, performer of The Queen and Me, based here in Toronto, Canada. I was 15 when I saw my first opera. It was The Magic Flute, Igmar Bergman's 1975 film, actually. Watching that opera on a big screen at the UBC Summer Opera Workshop, um, I just fell in love and I, and I decided right then and there that I was like, I need to do this and be a part of something that combines so many different forms of art, the music, the lighting, the costuming, the staging, and then this Olympic-sized singing. I was just blown away. And then seeing the Queen of the Night perform the infamous De Hule Rache aria, I just thought if I could only sing that once in my life, I would be really happy. And then I ended up going to uh, opera school at the University of British Columbia and then um, moved to Toronto right after that to join the ensemble studio here at the Canadian Opera Company. And that's when I came to my queerness for the first time in my mid-20s. Um, and then later returning to my Japanese heritage in my late uh, 20s, early 30s. And then um, also figuring out my gender in my early 30s was a big part of that. So about five or six years ago, I had been performing the Queen of the Night, this role. Um, you know, my dream when I was 15, um, a lot in, in various houses in Canada, also in Europe, and, or just being asked to perform it in concerts, etc. And often, more times than not, just feeling very dismissed in how I was being asked to portray this role. Um, as a character who is just, you know, ambitious, highly emotional, irrational, evil, this kind of witch-like character. And so I started to dream about, like, what would the Queen of the Night be saying offstage? And at Buddies in Bad Times Theatre, they have this Emerging Creators Unit, which I applied for um, in 2016. And there is where I had the opportunity to explore these ideas and and give backstory and elevate this fictionalized um, version of what I believe the Queen of the Night would be feeling off stage, and so it became it became a place where the Queen could finally speak for the first time, and then speak up not only for herself but characters like her, for characters who are othered in the canon. Uh, also for sopranos who play roles like the Queen of the Night and for those who maybe feel like they are othered in the industry as well. In preparing for this first 20-minute presentation of The Queen and Me, um, that's where I met Andrea Donaldson, who is now the artistic director of Nightwood Theatre and was the first dramaturge director of the show and is now co-directing with Arya Umezawa for the premiere coming up. It felt like such a perfect fit because she knew nothing about opera and I had to explain everything and explain my story and explain my experiences and in that dissecting and unpacking of my experiences of the industry of these nuances it really afforded me the chance to reflect um, in a very honest way had I been paired with a director who knew everything about opera it wouldn't have been the same show and so now I feel like I have a lifelong collaborator a lifelong friend in Andrea and also in Aria too, um, to be able to create shows that come from a very deep and vulnerable place but have very important messages that I want to share with the world. So The Queen and Me starts at the beginning of The Queen of the Night's infamous De Hulle Rache Aria, um, but instead of going as planned, she stops the show and from there she starts in German to express that she's had enough. She's had enough of singing that aria over and over again for the past 231 or so years but quickly realizes no one speaks German so she, she switches to English and starts to advocate for all the frustrations and the oppression that she feels as a character, characters like her sopranos who play her um, in the industry 
And every scene, she uses a different aria to express and highlight her message that the industry, um, there are a lot of problems in it and things do need to change. And we do need to expand our perspective in who is included and who is celebrated. You're gonna see some Lady Macbeth, the Verdi, um, Manon Lescaut, Puccini, there's also some Esclarmonde, Massenet. Um, there is a little bit of Mimi, La Boheme, Musetta, uh, Caro Nome. So like even some older favorites, obviously Magic Flute, you're gonna get that. I think I tried to pick the, the favorites, but also excerpts that are beautiful, that, that are highly dramatic, that these characters are on, are on the precipice of life or death you know, or of love or despair, those kinds of things. I was trained really well to be a good student, to be a good performer, to, to know the subtext of the characters I was playing, to really uh, embody those characters. And I think the pressure of performing well and always trying to be better than those around me, um, that pressure bled into my personal life and bled into who I was in social situations. And that kind of pressure was also upheld by the atmosphere of the opera industry as well. And so that pressure was not only about being good, but being feminine, being white passing, being hetero presenting as well. And so this is an ongoing kind of unpacking, healing process that I'm on and I feel fortunate that I have the support of friends and family and colleagues to unpack that and explore it through art. I think what I'm proud about is that I get to be honest. And that's a really hard thing to do in opera and to do as a performer in this industry. Um, and I get to do it in a creative way this piece has allowed me to grow as a human, as an artist, and has, brought, and has brought me closer to all these colleagues that I love working with as well, and has also, I think, given me the chance to start my healing journey with opera and with the industry as well. I think there will be something different for, for everyone to take away from this show, you know, depending on who you are. Um, there's a lot of nuance and layers of if you're an opera aficionado you know you'll you'll get the, the the references the subtle and overt references that I've layered in um, which is the opera nerd in me that likes to do that um, but also if you've never seen opera um, I hope that you'll return because I feel like this is a very accessible show you know we have one character that is speaking directly at the audience direct address and you're gonna see the opera singing like very up close, very in your face, which often you don't get, um, sometimes in very large houses if you have a seat far away. I also hope that folks leave this show feeling challenged, feeling that their perspective on opera and opera singers um, can really grow and expand and maybe change and evolve. Um, because I love opera so much, and I feel so fortunate to be able to continue to sing and work in this industry. And even though it has its challenges, I want to make this a, a more inclusive, a more safe space for folks like me, for folks who are, have yet to come to feel included in this, in this industry.